A Marine Corps F-35B Joint Strike Fighter accidentally shot itself during a practice mission. As per some reports, this has caused damage of more than $2.5 million. The good thing was the fighter jet was able to land and the pilot was not injured. As per Military.com, the accident took place during a nighttime close air support mission at Marine Corps Air Station, Yuma, in Arizona. A 25mm PGU-32U semi-armor-piercing high-explosive incendiary tracer SAP-HI-T cannon round exploded shortly after being fired from the F-35B's GAU-22 4-barrel 25mm Gatling gun. GAU-22 is designed to be used in dogfights against other aircraft and ground targets. F-35B carries the GAU-22 gun in a separate gun pod mounted to the airplane's belly. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air, and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder's been kind enough to offer all defense updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. Twenty Chinese military aircraft entered Taiwan's air defense identification zone in the largest incursion reported till now. The ministry said the Air Force deployed missiles to monitor the incursion into the southwestern part of its air defense identification zone. It also said its planes warned the Chinese aircraft. China considers Taiwan as part of its territory and is willing to bring it back into its fold even if it requires force. It's taken a very hostile stance in recent times and has been sending aircraft and ships to intimidate Taiwan. Taiwan said the Chinese fleet was made up of four nuclear-capable H-6K bombers and ten J-16 fighter jets, among others. North Korea has tested a new missile. As per the country's official statement, the missile was a new type of tactical guided projectile. State media said it had an improved version of a solid fuel engine and described it as a tactical guided missile that could perform gliding and pull-up maneuvers, which could potentially make it harder to intercept. It was the country's first ballistic launch in almost a year and the first since Joe Biden became U.S. President. Rai Pyeongchol, the senior leader who oversaw the test, was quoted as saying, The development of this weapons system is of great significance in bolstering up the military power of the country and deterring all sorts of military threats. Mr. Biden told reporters that the launch was a violation of UN resolutions and that the U.S. was consulting with partners and allies. He added, There will be responses. If they choose to escalate, we will respond accordingly. But I am also prepared for some form of diplomacy, but it has to be conditioned upon the end result of denuclearization. Some experts have stated that the new missile will enable North Korea to deploy heavier nuclear warheads. The Russian military stated three members of a Russian bomber's aircrew died when their ejection seats accidentally activated during pre-flight checks. The Russian Defense Ministry said the incident happened at an airbase in the Kaluga region, about 145 kilometers or 90 miles southwest of Moscow. It said the crew of a Tu-22M3 long-range bomber was preparing for a training mission 
when its ejection system malfunctioned and accidentally shot the crew out. The ministry said the altitude wasn't enough for the parachutes to open, and three of the four crew members died of injuries. Russian news reports said the fourth crew member survived the incident and was hospitalized. An investigation into the incident has also been launched. According to a senior official statement on March 25th, Taiwan has begun mass production of its first class of long-range surface-to-surface missiles and has three further classes under development. Taking questions in parliament from lawmakers, Defense Minister Chiu Kao Cheng said that developing a long-range strike capability was a priority. We hope it is long-range, accurate and mobile, he said, explaining that research on such weapons programs by the National Chungsheng Institute of Science and Technology had never stopped. The institute's deputy director, Lang Xin Su, said it was not convenient for him to provide details of the missile's exact range. The statement comes after a series of missile tests were carried out using designs developed by the Institute of Taiwan's southeastern coast. For the first time ever, the Indian Navy will participate in the French naval exercises in the Bay of Bengal. The drill is expected to be carried out early next month. According to sources, Quad member nations are also going to be part of this exercise. Quad, or Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, is an informal strategic forum between the United States, Japan, India, and Australia which is likely to play a major role when it comes to dealing with China in the Indo-Pacific region. The timing is crucial. The drills will be taking place soon after the first-ever Leaders' Summit of the Quad and the visits of the U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin and the Defense Minister of South Korea Mr. Su Wook to India. The admiral slated to command U.S. forces in the Indo-Pacific told lawmakers the future of the world could come down to how the United States and its allies respond to increasing militarization and aggressive China. Navy Admiral John Aquilino told members of the Senate Armed Services Committee, Global peace and prosperity depend on our presence in the Indo-Pacific. Admiral Aquilino, who currently commands the Navy's Pacific Fleet, said, The United States Navy is the most powerful, greatest Navy on the planet still. He added, The Chinese are increasing their capability and capacity and closing that gap. Viewers may note that Mr. Aquilino is selected by U.S. President Joe Biden to take over from the current head of Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral Philip Davidson, who is set to retire. His comment is the latest in a series of high-ranking military officials to sound alarms about the Chinese military. Earlier, Davidson had said China's leadership had been accelerating their ambitions to supplant the United States as a leader on the world stage. It was also anticipated that Beijing could seek to take Taiwan by force within the next six years. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this, hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.